Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you've had a great day, a great Christmas Eve Eve. Hope you're gearing up for the holidays and getting ready for it. I know my kids are very excited for all the um, all the activities and more and things like that. And I am too, just to see all the smiles on the kids' face and everything. Very excited about that. So um, hope you guys have had a great work week. Hopefully it's over for most of you guys. Hopefully not a lot of you guys have to work on Christmas Eve. I know once upon a time I used to have to work on Christmas Eve a lot when I worked two jobs back in back in a little deeper in my 20s um but uh thank you all for tuning in tonight hope you are doing okay in this video we're going to talk about uh the potential coming up for some severe weather to round off the last few days of the year maybe getting into the new year with such clashing of air masses coming up um where we're going to have that very cold arctic and dry air that's going to to kind of rub up against that uh, the, the moist air and the warmer air eventually that's going to spark some kind of severe weather event even the national weather services storm prediction center is even mentioning it it hasn't highlighted any kind of area yet but um i'm going to talk about that because what what alarms me with this is this is going to be a big clashing of air masses and it looks like it could potentially using that word again potentially set up around the same areas as the one that happened a couple weekends ago not saying those areas are going to get hit necessarily but i do think that we're going to at least have a little bit of severe weather, at least a little bit, um, as we round out the new year. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, obviously, while we're talking about that, I'm going to talk about the latest on the models a little bit, too, and what's going on with that, as I haven't seen many changes about uh, necessarily some kind of huge pattern change coming up. It definitely looks like the rest of the year is going to remain warmer than average across most of the eastern U.S. But if you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button for me. Sorry, my little uh, uh, picture over here fell. If you hear any beating in the background, my wife's making macarons, and for some reason, uh, beating is part of the process of making them things. So uh, if you hear that in the background, I do apologize. We're just getting ready for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, if you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button for me. Like the video if you like it. I'm going to fall short on my goal this year, but that's okay. Uh, I blame it on a lack of winter weather because honestly, uh, that's really what propelled my channel last year was uh, the winter winter weather. And um, yeah, it's just been lack of it this, this month. I mean, hardly any of it in the eastern U.S. No big storms, no snow in the south, and it's just been quiet. So let's talk about the potential for the severe weather. So we're going to start this off by looking at dew points off the latest European model. Um, we're going to get rid of these dry dew points. And next week, Getting into next week, this is after Christmas. Christmas, obviously, you have this Arctic dry air. These are these are dew points, not temperatures. And obviously, you have very dry air um, across the uh, Pacific Northwest as Arctic air is moving in. And then you look at these. Uh, this looks like it would. This this air is so dry, I could probably uh, turn your lips into basically um, uh, the driest thing you can think of because that is some very dry air up here. But anyways, moving forward here, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have and we're getting into December 27th, early next week. We're going to have temporary spikes in warm sectors. So what I'm saying is you're basically going to have warm, moist air shoot up out the Gulf occasionally. And then you're going to have little dips in the jet stream that occasionally beat it back down. And then this moist air is going to build back up again, these dew points in the 60s, and even some 70s along the Gulf Coast. And what's happening here is you're having clashes of air masses. You're having very dry Arctic air clashing with very moist gulf air and eventually you're going to have some kind of short wave i mean it's inevitable because this pattern is going to set up for the next five or six days and do this maybe longer so it's inevitable that eventually a short wave is going to ride across the jet here and uh yeah you're going to have a warm moist sector set up here and you're going to have the clashing of air masses all right but you see the clashes of air masses here if you notice my little girl just popped up in the videos because she really wanted to sit in on the video, and she saw her little sister do it a few videos back, so uh, here she is. But anyways, you see these higher dew points mixed with this very dry air. Uh, to me, and, and the thing is, is you have this moist sector pushing them almost all the way up to Chicago, to the Ohio Valley. So it's a very similar setup to the one that happened. I'm not going to call it a similar setup. There's a lot more things that go into severe weather besides just higher dew points, right? And there's different thermodynamics you need and uh, definitely a lot of pieces to the puzzle to make a big time severe weather outbreak but what i'm saying is as far as a moisture field it's certainly there you have a lot of moisture to deal with up against a, a totally different air mass 
um, to the west. But as far as precipitation, you know, you're not going to see it much here. You're going to see systems fly up here. Could this be severe weather on the 28th? It might be. We need to see what's going on. But what I'm really watching is these areas right into here. These green areas and, you know, when we're trying to figure out severe weather on the long range, um, it's going to show up as just green, right? It's not really going to show up as uh, thunderstorms. All you're going to see is the green. So you're just not going to... You're just not going to be able to tell by just looking at the precipitation. But as far as looking at Cape, you can tell the spikes in Cape down here. Watch them, watch them spike up right here. As we get into around the 29th time frame, it spikes up in the western Gulf into Texas, up into Arkansas. Even Missouri gets beat down a little bit, then it rises again, and then it rises big time right at the end of the run, very far north. And this is the time frame I'm watching. These Cape values aren't huge, but... You don't need huge Cape values at this time of the year. Um, so going forward here, really, this little Cape mixed in with higher dew points, mixed in with a lot of wind energy, which is about what I'm about to show you. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. But I'm telling you, the, the biggest piece of the puzzle, really, is the changing of air masses right in the middle of the country. Um, and that's why some of the, that's some of the more obvious uh, elements that you need to the severe weather. As far as the 850 jet, which is winds just a lot, a few, several thousand, not several, but a few thousand feet up in the air. Um, you, you're going forward here and you look right into here. This is a big time low level jet that sets up and watch, watch it move right across the Ohio Valley. To me, that tells me that this is a cold front pushing through. You got some kind of short wave probably setting up here, sparking, um, the energy that you need precipitation wise. Um, right into this area. So you have a big time elevated wind field here that's going to potentially uh, provide some spin to the atmosphere. We don't know that for sure. You look at the 500 millibar jet here. Uh, this is several thousand feet up in the air. And uh, you see a big time positively tilted trough here that swings through. But this is a, you know, the, these troughs can can provide a big time, you know, positively tilted troughs normally or, or, or the systems that provide more of a weaker severe weather threat not 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 near as bad as what a negatively tilted trough does but if you look at the the, the system that set up a couple weekends ago that wasn't a negatively tilted trough and it produced multiple ef4 tornadoes and killed a lot of people unfortunately so you got to take these severe weather sets up and, and when you have a ridge like this in the east um eventually eventually that um, that pattern is going to get beat down. And while it's getting beat down, normally you have a severe weather threat with it. If you go back, um, and I think today was the anniversary of that tornado outbreak in Mississippi in 2015. If, any, if anybody remembers anything about 2015, it was extremely warm, extremely warm Christmas, even warmer than what it's going to be for this Christmas, which is going to be a pretty warm Christmas across the South. It was warm not just in the south, but up into the mid-Atlantic and northeast, too. Um, but if you remember, it was very warm. So it's going to be very warm the last week of New Year's, uh, the last week of this year. So looking at temperatures, you look at these spikes as you're getting to the 27th. Um, look at these spikes in temperatures uh, kind of riding the boundary against this Arctic air mass. you got temperatures almost getting into the 60s all the way into Iowa as you're getting into the last couple days of the year. Then you have a push of that Arctic air. Then it gets pushed back. And then you have a big surge right here. And I know this is nine days out, but this Arctic front finally gets a move on a little bit further southeast. But look at these temperatures, almost getting into the 70s in Ohio Valley on January 2nd. That would certainly break some records. But along this big time digging Arctic air mass, you're probably going to have some kind of severe weather event. So it's really hard to figure out here, guys. It really is. You look at the latest GFS and uh, you see one little piece of energy right here. Um, you go it back in time to around New Year's Eve. You see some more um, energy setting up right here. Another low pressure setting up and flying across. So um, one thing I'll show you here is uh, the ridge and the trough. And then we get right towards the end of the year, big trough against the big ridge, and then the jet strings flying across the middle here. Two big boundaries is going to be a promotion for severe weather. It really is. But as far as going forward, what I'm seeing uh, past the new year, I've already discussed what's going to happen the rest of the year. And nothing's going to change on that. I don't see anything breaking the pattern in the eastern U.S. 
uh, before New Year. I really don't. But, you know, I'm consistently seeing this this cold front setting up. Um, it's getting closer and closer to the, um, not to the medium range necessarily, but we're getting a little bit closer in time now with a ne the next push of cold air that'll bring us back to reality as far as bring us back to more January and winter type temperatures. I'm starting to see a cold front showing up at day 11, day 12, that's starting to consistently show up on the GFS. And of course, that's not in the Europeans range. European goes to day 10. But as you can tell, this is 240, 246, 52, uh, 260 hours out. You have a trough that finally pushes through, causes a widespread snow event across the uh, Mid-South and Southeast. And uh, that's what happens. You finally get the pattern that breaks the southeast ridge, at least temporarily. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on what's going to happen. That's all I got, guys. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping next week, enjoy next week. I know I am. It's going to be warmer than average. Hopefully we don't get a severe weather event. Um, I just don't see us not getting at least something. But um, enjoy, enjoy the weather um, because who knows if, if it's going to get cold again and uh, you're going to miss it. So um, God bless all y'all and y'all have a great night.